up all my LJC family and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back family. Today is Saturday, June the 3rd. And I just want to tell y'all, I love y'all. I thank y'all for all the love and support that y'all have been showing me. I thank y'all for everything that y'all have been coming liking sh and just giving me so much advice and asking me you know questions and everything you know today i look at life a little different and i see the big picture everything that i was seeing before i have completely just change the colors in that picture i changed the pattern and i changed the background i changed everything in it y'all because on may the 30th my life my life changed for the worse y'all i was laying in my bed um monday night and i was woke up to gunshots i was woke up to gunshots I tell y'all, these were gunshots I ain't never, ever in my life heard. I never heard those type of gunshots. Never. And it was and it was just like it was right outside my window. I jumped up. And when I jumped up, I immediately started to think about my son. And for some reason, the gunshots, the way that they sounded, it was just like, it was a warning shot for me. Like, you know, like I was feeling it or I was, I, I, I just can't really explain it, but I tell you, I heard it. And I jumped up and I said, wow, somebody is shooting outside or something is going on outside. But the way it sounded, I never heard nothing like that before. So I'm beginning to panic. I jump up. I go use the restroom. My daughter calls me. She thought that someone was breaking in her house or trying to knock on her window. And the gunshots were so loud. That's how it disturbed all of the neighbors. It sounded like somebody was beating on your windows or it was that powerful. So I kind of got that feeling and that feeling was just awkward, y'all. It was one of the worst feelings of my life. So my daughter, she called me and we were talking and she and I was telling her that I heard the same thing. She thought somebody was trying to break in and she was just explaining to me. So I immediately said that I was going to call my son. I got up. I hung up the phone with her and I called my son. No one answered. I called again. A person answered. So I'm like, okay, you know, I know maybe it wasn't no involvements with him. Um, so, you know, I'm okay. But then the person hung up in my face. So I called back. It wasn't my son's voice. And the person told me, I got to call you back. I got to call you back. I got to call you back. So I immediately started panicking. And why I started panicking? Because I know the type of things that, you know, the type of friends and the type of people that he hang around. I knew it's just something wasn't right in my soul. Something was not right. I, it was not something. The way that sounded, it sounded like it was just meant for me to hear. It was meant for me to hear that. So... I went outside, went to my daughter's house, and my nephew was over there. They walked across the street to see what was going on. By then, it was police everywhere. It was yellow tape everywhere, police everywhere. It was just so much going on. They go over there. They try to ask questions. And by this time, the identity, it didn't fit my son. And... They come back across the street. We call his phone again, the person who had his phone. 
They was lying and telling us this and telling us that and telling us that he didn't, you know, he was okay and this and this and that. Just, just telling us a rundown of lies. So we get to this point to where I'm just like, my son should have been home by now. So I started panicking. Me and my daughter were sitting there. We just started thinking about stuff. And I'm just like, she's like, no, that can't be him. They said that wasn't him. But something in my soul was telling me that was him. It was just, just like, it was a feeling that I never had. But it was a feeling that something wasn't right. And the feeling kept telling me that was him. That was him. That was him. And y'all, I tell y'all, I told my daughter, we walked down the stairs. We looked around the apartments to see if we could see him. We didn't see him. So I told my daughter, let's just go. She said, you want to walk over here? And me, I just, uh, I don't know. I just hate just going to just put somebody in something, you know, that didn't have anything to do with it. So we walked over there. And I told them, you know, the description of my son. It's like, no, that wasn't him. But yes, it was a young African-American. And he looked like this. I say, well, my son looked young. So right then and there, when he told me African-American, the lies I'm getting from the other parties, I'm like, okay, something is not right. So this go on. They continue. Just go on and go on and go on. The lies continue. The lies continue. So... I say, well, okay, maybe he'll come home. So I go home and I turn my phone on to my uh, uh, my my camera for my door. And I say, I know that when he come up them stairs, I'm going to see him. I waited and waited. I laid in the bed. And my body would not let me lay there. I said, I cannot do this. So I got up. I just put some clothes on, I combed my hair, I brushed my teeth, and I just started panicking like, why isn't he calling? Why isn't he coming home? What is going on? By this time, I'm already finding out of the situation that he was in that area. He was there at the time of the shooting. I'm already knowing this. So I'm really, really getting nervous. Everybody else is accounted for but my son. Everybody. But y'all steady. We steady asking y'all. There's, We giving descriptions. We steady doing everything. No one is saying anything. It's all being saying no, 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 no. So I, I come out the bathroom from brushing my teeth. And I hear a knock on the door. I say, oh, that's him. I'm finna go get on his butt. Because I don't know what happened. But I'm finna go get on his butt. So I go. I open up the door and this detective, I immediately just like fell like, just like my whole body went in shock. My whole body went in shock. The, uh, the sheriffs told me that was your son. I just did not know what to do. I almost passed out. They had to, you know, who can we call, you know, to come over here and all this other kind of stuff. I told my daughter lived next door. And then they started asking me all these questions. Sir, at this point, I don't care what I can't. I don't even understand the words that was coming out of his mouth was mumbling. I didn't understand nothing but my son. You telling me my son got shot in the head. He was rushed to this hospital. And then they told me I couldn't go see my son. They would advise me not to go up there. So you t advising me and telling me all of this stuff about my son that just got shot in the head? Oh, no, that don't fly right with me. So I'm nervous. I'm shaking. I'm crying. I'm frustrated. I'm mad. I'm angry. I got 50 million and one things going through my mind. I come up to the hospital. They don't want to give us no information. They don't want to tell us nothing. Finally, we, you know, my son was already here. He had, they had, he had someone he went to, um, someone, he you know, some, something, I don't know. And they was calming him down and, you know, trying to, you know, see if they could help him get some information. And they helped him. People came down, different pe nurses and stuff came down and they got information and they talked to us. 
and we still didn't know nothing. So they was just like, you know, we want to take y'all back to the sur to the uh he's in surgery. We did know he was in surgery. And we want to take y'all back to the surgery room so that you know, the surgeon can come down, talk to you and explain a lot of little things. Y'all at this point I'm numb. I'm numb. I'm numb to everything. I'm just so numb. And then I'm just like, Lord, what else? You know, what else? You know, this is just, what else can I take? What else is there in my life that I have to go through? What else? I just kept saying, what else? What else? What else? What else? Then I just start saying nothing more important than my son, nothing more important than my son. And I just started having all these mixed emotions and I started feeling a certain way. And, you know, every my daughter and my daughter-in-law, her mom, we all at the hospital. You know, we all there. My son had, you know, he just couldn't take it. So he left. And then, you know, my nephew came, his friend. And then, you know, uh, my son, you know, I mean, uh, they, they stepdad came. And, you know, we have been through so much, so much. I have said my anger. I have said my just so much stuff. But I tell you, this man was there with no hesitation. And everything that was in my head about anything, it fell off. Because at this time, everybody here is for my son. Everybody here is for me. It ain't no if, ends, and but. Everything that I have ever been through, that all fell off. I know we're family. Everybody here love each other. Everybody here love him. So we all sat around and everything I tell y'all, everything just my heart my mind my soul it just cleared out of my life i tell y'all do not hold grudges against nobody do not hold grudges do not hold grudges against nobody i don't care i know we're gonna get mad i know we're gonna be heartbroken we're gonna be hurting for different situations in our life but when you go through a tragedy like this and no same people show up, that's love. I don't care what the circumstance was. I don't care what y'all done been through. Throw that stuff in the trash and continue. It's not no nobody's trying this and nobody's trying that. We are family. We're going to get through this together. We're going to fight through this together. I don't have. I tell y'all, my heart, I don't have no hard feelings for nobody. Nobody. All I want is my son to be better. All I want is for him to walk up out that hospital and come home with me. That's all I want. Just to have your son shot in the head, ran over and left for dead by your friends, somebody that you are supposed to trust, somebody that you put your trust in every day to do that to you. I tell y'all, love on your family. Teach your kids who their friends are, who is going to love them, who is going to be. I have been telling this boy for years to be careful who he hang with, to be careful. I don't care what the circumstance is. Ain't no friend supposed to leave you laying on the grid, on the ground. What, whatever what the situation whatever happened we'll never get the real story until if he's able to wake up and be in his right mind we'll never be able to get the real story of what happened and witnesses is telling that my son was ran over so not only did y'all leave him for dead y'all ran him over trying to get away people just don't know if I could trade places with him, I would because I'm his mother. I don't want to see my child hurt, suffering, in pain. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see none of my kids going through that. My kids is breaking down. My grandkids is breaking down. You know how painful that is? And you got to stand there and you got to tell them it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay because you know what? I trust God and I know God got me. 
So I have to be the one to be strong. I have to be the one. This is the most hurtfulest thing that any parent can go through besides losing their child. My child is still here and I'm praising God. I don't want that whole feeling. I don't want that feeling, but I know what a parent go through even to imagine losing your child. Because when I got here and didn't know if my child was going to make it or not, 50 million and one thoughts went through my head. But I'm just telling y'all, love on your children, love on your family, teach them right from wrong, teach them who your friends, who ain't your friends, teach them the respectable way to go of living in life, teach them that life don't care about what this is going on, what that is going on. You have to be the one to live your life. Life is not going to live you. You got to live your life. We got to stop. But I tell you one thing. I tell you one thing. I will never hold a grudge against anyone. I will never have a bad feeling. I don't care what the circumstance is. God is going to walk my baby out that hospital. I know he is. I know he is. And I don't even care if it's a walk, it's a roll, whatever it is. I just, I'm just going to be happy that he's alive. I can see him every day. Whatever the circumstances is afterwards, I know God got me. I know God got him. God is going to keep me strong for my family. My family, my children need me. But I just want to thank y'all, my LJC family. I'm getting so emotional right now. I can just, I really can. I haven't had that time to break down. I haven't had that time. I cried. I was emotional. I, I was furious. I wanted revenge. I, it, it's everything I wanted. Everything I wanted. But I got to be strong for my kids. My kids. I have to be strong for them. Because if I'm not strong, who gonna be strong? You know, I sit and I look and I think like, I don't have nobody to be to lean on to cry. I got, I don't want my kids to see me break down. So I don't have nobody to lean on. You know, like when you used to have that second person, you know, you could cry at night and they can hold you. And you, I don't have that. I don't have that. But I'm grateful that I have the support that I have, you know. I would never hold grudges. I would never hate. I would never, ever do that towards anyone ever in life. Life is short. Love who you, love everybody. Don't love who you're going to love. Love everybody. God created everybody. So love everybody. Thank God for everything. Everything. Be thankful. Give God the glory. I love y'all all my LJC family. Until next time, peace.